is a very successful uh, PM at Cisco right now, and then he pivoted his career from consult consulting firm to the tech. And I'm pretty sure he will share his journey with you guys. So hand over to you, Yikai. No problem, no problem. Thanks, um, Constance, for the intro. So here I'm, I'm Yenkai, I'm, you can call me YK. I'm here uh, to be a moderator for this fantastic panel for product management. So before uh, we set up this theme, um, since the, we think PM has been the more important work in the current industry, particularly at tech, and that uh, we are thinking about whether we want to talk broadly as like program management, product management, project management, or we only focus on product. And we find this fantastic light out of speaker. They are product management, so that's set the scene. And when we have a discussion, we think about, uh, let's treat this panel as a product. So first thing we need to do is that we want to know our customer. So it's all of you. So I want to know here, um, is any of you who are product management? Can you raise your hand? Or will you do it contrary? Uh, it's easily way. If you are not product management, can you raise your hand? I think most of them. So uh, thank you. But if you're a product manage manager, please raise your hand. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so we know the, the audience well. And uh, the other ones that if you directly work with product manager at your work, could you raise your hand? And do you like PM? <laughs> 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 Sometimes, yeah, I hope that you are like a one, feel like we, we only got a backlog and chase you for your work. <laughs> we are not type of the PM, so you all know that uh, we try to be more considerate and that you can know a lot of different types of PM in today's session. All right, so I'm doing a quick intro. I'm here at Cisco being um, a product management for data center. So you see a lot of us are actually um, doing pro product in, in data or data center or infra, I think that is pro probably say a little bit about our expertise and like we are some of them, uh, some of us are engineering background and some of them are consultant background or business background. I think you can see different perspectives from our panelists. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our uh, panelists. Uh, firstly, I would like to intro Robert Hey, yeah, <laughs> Robert is right now uh, a product management lead or a principal product manager at Meta. And uh, I hope that you introduce yourself. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Robert. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, Robert, uh, yeah, I'm PM at Meta working on all the analytics products. Also, basically, data uh, infrastructure and AI infrastructure in enabling basically the, uh, the producers or like uh, analyst using all the analytics toolings in Meta. Yeah. I'll pass it over to Andy. Yeah. Since Yun Kai and Robert. So this is Andy Guo. I'm currently work as a product manager at NVIDIA and focus on the data center product line, especially focus on the ecosystem en enablement. And I also working with a lot of the system partner to enable, enable them to working together with uh, NVIDIA. So system, system partner, we so-called that um, Taiwan the Xi Tong Cha. And the product, the data center product line, you can imagine sometimes that you heard that the Blackwell, the uh, Harper, GPU, those kind of uh, product line that are the, the, the data center product line GPU. So yeah, excited to share my journey for the PM role here. Thank you. Nice. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. So I'm Lily. So I'm actually based in Seattle, and I come here for this event. And Ooh. so. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> so I currently work at Meta, just the same as uh, Robert. So I work on the data annotation platform for Gen AI. So basically, like uh, when you heard about Llama, Meta AI, so all those data is coming from uh, the product that I'm working on. And uh, so I actually started my career as an engineer and then transitioned to product manager. So I'm sure like a lot of people here, maybe they are engineer, also thinking about like uh, maybe transition to the product management. So uh, I hope uh, my sharing and also my journey can be helpful for you all. And it's really my honor to be here. Thank you. Nice. 
Yeah. So I love being a moderator because um, when they invite me, I say, oh yeah, do I want to be a speaker? I think I probably don't have too much in my bag, but I can have a, a lot of good question for our panelists. I can sit back and grill them <laughs> and enjoy the ride. I hope you enjoy the ride as well. So yeah, let's get started, but uh, maybe for an easier question. So a lot of us maybe not in, in this room may not know too much about the product and the product work. But uh, in the industry, maybe there's more rigid definition of a product, particularly it's, anyway, it's different from program or project management. So I wonder in your, your work, uh, how do you define a product work and how do you define maybe your day-to-day -day, and how does it differ from the general uh, project work or other like business initiatives work? What is about your product work? Uh, sure, I, I can probably take this one. Nice. Um, so to me, if I can just wrap it in one sentence, I would say prop uh, PM, the max value is to make sure the team focus on the biggest ROI projects at any given time. And that could change. And the, if you find the other bigger impact projects and there's a job of the PM, you help the team to pivot fast. And there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, this type of the PM uh, of the you know, architects, I think they will, keep, will be follow on that. So to me, there's two main parts on this type of the, the enablement. One is the strategy, and the second is execution. Uh, for me, I think if it's in the more like early stage, you identify the problem or the opportunity, as a job of the PM is to have the strategy. And what is the strategy? So my easy framework is a couple of things. The first one is vision. A one-liner got to be powerful and paint the picture and move all the teams to drive to that goal. Everything in your team do is tied to that. So for example, um, as analytics tooling in Meta, the vision could be something like to make Meta data experts the most productive in the world. And that can be a couple of things tied back to the strategy. Um, that could be, for example, one could be um, make data work streamlined as software development. And that could be nobody wait for insights. I'm just making this up. And that would be the strategy goal for each team to execute. And so there's following up on there's like prioritizations, there's like trade off. That could be also a PM job. And then when it comes to a planning, like end of the half, and there will be a roadmap discussion based on the strategy you work with the team. And all these things, that prioritization and trade-off could feed into the roadmap for the team for the execution. So that's kind of like my um, insights on, on this too. Yeah. Any, yeah. any thoughts? I think it's a great, great saying that uh, you can see, uh, Robert saying that the uh, some of the product work is about pivot the team and say actually it's some type of a prioritization that we find the most useful uh, with most uh, value to the product and make product works. I wonder if any of you want to add on this point or you have share your own perspective. Uh, I think Robert actually addressed it very well. And I also want to add some a little bit unconventional take on like what PM do like every day. Love it. <laughs> yeah, so I do think that as a PM, you basically just do whatever to make your product success. So if 100%. it's like if the product is lack of uh, the strategy, then you need to help drive that strategy. But like for example, uh, right now I actually travel to uh, California a lot and then to meet with uh, my engineering team. And then sometimes when I sit in a meeting room. My engineer will come to me and then complain about anything. And I'm just like a counselor. I just like sit there and then listen to them to listen to their complaint and then make them happy. And then when they're happy, they go build up my product. So that's also <laughs> what PM needs to do. And then also I remember when I was in Microsoft and then working on some healthcare related product, I actually go to like a conference and then pitch uh, like a VP of uh, IBM Health and then try to get him interested in our product and then try to like kind of build a partnership with external partners. So if, if that's a thing you need to do to make your product happen, then you will have to do that. So to me, I just feel like I'm, so people like to say like you are the CEO of a product, but to me, I just feel like you do whatever thing to make your product success. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would love to be a CEO of a product, but I don't have equity. <laughs> yeah, do you anything yeah. to add? I totally agree with Lydia and Robert. Yeah, so people say like uh, product manager is not like CEO, but I would say that would be a like, pilot in command or a person in charge for this project, right? So whatever you are going to do to make your product successful, no matter that is strategy needed, any action needed, you can like, focus on what you need to feel like comfortable and make sure your product to be successful. Um, back to the question regarding to the daily work for the product manager. How, I, how do I frame this, um, my daily work I would like to share with the team. So product manager, as I feel that is the, you are the central man that outbound facing to your end customer, to your ecosystem, to your partners, right? And also, Internally, you want to like, discuss with your internal team, no matter that is engineering team, marketing team, CPM, even your AE engineer or marketing team, right? With the bi-directional information come in and out. And also, you're going to have some of the information to your upper management, right? So daily, you're going to like, work in a lot of information. Right. So sometimes people say, hey, actually you can think about you are the CPU and then you deal with a lot of information from the data to knowledge to insight and transfer to the action or even the, the strategy. Right. However, now I'm thinking we are now in the Gen AI generation. We are thinking we are the GPU. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, with ChatGPT, you're going to have a bunch of knowledge. All the intelligence from your colleague, from your ecosystem partner, from your boss. Every day you have a lot of different human intelligence come into your mind, right? And then you need to change the knowledge to become the valuable insight and transfer to the strategy, to the action item, right? Um, so those, those are our daily job and those information is daily change right and you want to prioritize to make your product success to make your product become popular product so this is my tag for the pm daily work um however another role from my side is hardware focus so we are thinking about our daily work is like education level is like you are doing the product planning you are doing the kickoff and then start a uh, engineering validation, design validation, to do the uh, production validation, and so on, right? What I'm thinking right now that in this industry, we do see some of the uh, revolution from here. No matter there are uh, new uh, industry uh, standard coming out, and also um, some of the uh, ecosystem now working very closely to make sure the tie to market. So a lot of new paradigm is changed in this new era. So I'm so excited to become a hardware product manager at this new era. Okay? Yeah, yeah 100%. And uh, just what, what Andy says really echo me a lot, especially on the daily, daily work as a GPU. This is really a, a buzzword at the moment. We're buying 2.5 billion of the GPU from NVIDIA, so we're very good customers. <laughs> oh, from yeah, I try to buy more, but I, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so about daily work, we heard Lady take, uh, the take up is about PM success is, is team success. You know, whatever team needs, PM just go ahead and do it. And Andy mentioned that as a CPU, GPU, processing so much information, info out for every day of your job. But for daily, how can PM make sure that you're not stressed out, you're not burned out, then you feel a lot of things out of your control? To me, it's about the main thing. So my definition of the main thing is you wake up every single day or wake up, you know, uh, you log into your, your laptop Monday morning, you know what's motivating you to do. And that's the thing to drive you, and whatever you do is just to, 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 to enable that. Um, saying no to many things actually is saying yes to your, to your main thing. If you say yes to many things, if you, if you feel like, hey, there's 
something, you know, like some manager needs me to, to do, and then sometimes you lose yourself out of your control. But if you make that main thing very clear to your stakeholders, to your manager, and that really can make your daily job like more meaningful to, to yourself, because you know that's the thing I'm gonna work for, you know, for the whole year. You have that thing in control. And that, and we'll tie back to your calendar, whatever you prioritize your meeting, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a really good saying, I think. Uh, when the product, when we do a prioritization, a lot of time, less is more, that uh, if you say no to sin, that means you are laser focused to the, the main feature or the main value proposition of the product. So I think a good saying. And I really like, like Andy saying that uh, for about uh, GPU and CPU. So I think product recently become uh, more of a uh, more people because like GPU is like a multi-core, <laughs> multi-processing, not like CPU is central processing. <laughs> so previously maybe Steve Jobs is only a one to make a product decision at Apple and right now that uh, more product manager can make a great decision. Uh, let's uh, shift gear a little bit to, toward a different type of a product manager. As you mentioned, there are a lot of different roles that um, product manager can play and in different scenario, different type of company, or different type of products. And as I am a, more like a, a data center management software and uh, Robert's for infra and uh, uh, Andy for hardware and Lily for the ads and uh, also the infra. So I wonder how do you, what's your take on your role? Maybe you previously in different company changed or what's your role, what's different product type uh, in your framing and what you're playing right now? So, need so maybe start? I can start because I guess I'm the one that worked for the most company yeah. on the stage. Yeah, you yeah. should list your, your <laughs> shining resume. Yeah, it's <laughs> resume is just... Yeah, so because um, I have worked at like very early stage startup and like series B startup and also like have also start something on the side. And also I work for companies like uh, Microsoft, uh, AWS, and then also Meta. And I can say that Different type of the company, different type of the product actually require very different type of the PM skill set. And I really like a theory of the like a PM's archetype. So they say that there are three types of the PM. So the first is more on the visionary side. So you can say that like maybe Sam Altman or like Steve Jobs, like those people that they always think ahead of everyone and then look at what is the future look like. And those are more like a visionary product leaders. And the second type is more like a craftsperson. So they are really good at like understand what is a customer pain and then build good product that can solve customers' problem. And then they can build like a really beautiful product that people love. And uh, I think a lot of, uh, I would say startup, like for their first couple hires of the product person would be this type of the product. Or like for in a big company, if they are trying to build a new product, they also need this type of the craft person. And then the third type of the PMs are more like an operator. So don't, so don't confuse like operator from the program manager. So these product manager, operator type of the product manager, they are still like owning the product. But their skill set is more on like, hey, how to drive the success metrics and also how to collaborate like a multiple team to achieve the same big project. And I, I think so, for example, like a lot of uh, infrastructure type of the project, you actually need to work with multiple teams. So as a product manager, you really need to have a really good like a people skill to collaborate like a different team and then navigate like the politics in the company. But sometimes like for craftsperson type of the PM, they might not enjoy politics that much and they, they like to focus on like a building good product. And then uh, for me, visionary type of the product leader, a lot of them actually, they are really good at vision, but they don't know how to execute. They, they cannot build a good product. So sometimes like, I feel like a good a company, if you want to success, you need to have like, a different mix of the product. And also at the different phase of the company. So for example, if you are like, at the growth phase of the company, then you really need like, a, like maybe a, a mix of the perhaps type of the PMs and also the operator type of the PM. 
And I think for people that uh, who are already PM right now, so it's also very important that you need to identify your skill set and then try to understand what type of the PM you are and also find the right company and then the right product. So a lot of time people, I somehow feel like when I talk to some like more junior people, they like to chase like a brand name, but sometimes uh, the product itself might not be the good fit for their skill set, but because the company is good, so they decided to join the company and then they end up feel like they don't enjoy the role as much. So I, that's why I feel like it's very important to know yourself and then understand like the product that you're working on. Yeah, 100%. Um, so sharing a, a, a small story, so. I, uh, before coming to the States, uh, it's, I think it's back in 2018. Uh, I came to the States in 2018. Before that, I was working in Japan as an engineer. I was uh, half Japanese and half Taiwanese, and I spent a lot of time in Japan. Then, so anyway, in that year, it's my first year doing an MBA in Michigan, and I reached, because I, I really want to be a PM, especially in the ML data space. Uh, it's all coming from an IoT project I did in Japan, and that really made me thinking about how can we do this trend, right? So when I, in the first year, and I want to reach out to those like successful PM in the industry, and then Lily's <laughs> LinkedIn happened to pop up, then I reached out, Lily was very kind enough to respond to me, and then we talk, talk about like, what's your motivation? What's the thing you really want to do to become a PM? So if you guys are now thinking about transitioning to the PM, um, I think this is a, a very good time for you to resonate. Is it the specialist kind of the PM that you want to be very diving deep into the area, like um, like the AI or like integrity or privacy kind of thing PM, or you want to be like a, like an operator or like a captain PM? You're very good at communicating, coordinating people, that kind of PM, or. If you're like a zero to one, you're like a founder or entrepreneur title PM, you're a sales PM, you wanna you know, pitch, get the resource kind of things, you can think about what kind of the skills you wanna build and then work backward from there. But here I just wanna say a big thank you, Lily. Like, <laughs> it's really motivating for me. By the way, I'm not that old. He makes me sound. <laughs> <old. laughs> yeah, yeah. Lily is a good mentor, even if a. Uh, oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah. It looks very young. <laughs> yeah. When I before I come into the states, I have a similar story with Robert that I want to be a VM, and uh, I think I am probably be very. Did you also reach out to Lily? <laughs> <laughs> later, later. I think uh, when I was interning. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I will, will be a a good visionary, and because I have a good eyesight, I'm not my epic. Just kidding. I just uh, I feel like I'm strategic thinking. But uh, sometimes the job market or the company or the role doesn't provide you uh, the align with your your aspiration or uh, things you want to build or the skill required. So I wonder how do you uh, navigate in your your career and um, how do you uh, know yourself more and build your skill set along the way uh, during the past journey and to, to reach out to a stage we are in. So do you have anything to? Yeah, how about I share my, also my journey to as a PM in US. So, um, so um, I think seven years ago when I come into US, I don't have any US degree. I don't have any work experience in the US. My whole experience is the you know, to work in as a hardware PM. Uh, that seven years ago, I was a, a notebook PM in Taiwan. And then, however, when I come to the US, I transfer my career to become a GPU uh, server PM. How do I transfer the, the, my upheaval, my career is that when I just come in in the US, I don't have, have those degree as I mentioned. So I just an uh, ordinary candidate in the whole job market. Right. What I'm doing is that I'm thinking I'm a product manager. I want to know my target customer. I want to know what is their pain point. I want to know what is the value I can provide to them. So I try to narrow down the target customer, which is that leverage my current experience and also leverage my advantage, which is focus on the hardware company. And the second one is that they are welcome to using Chinese as a second language. 
right? And the third one, when I demonstrate my capability, I separate my capability into two domains. The first one is the common PM knowledge, which is transferable for different industry. The second domain knowledge will be domain expert in this industry, right? So what I'm doing is that I share with them about my, my, my PM skill, and also I demonstrate I can learn quickly in this domain expert industry knowledge and become an uh, immediate contributor to the team. So that's why I end up as a, a GPU server PM in US. And after that, um, seven years ago, GPU server is not, it is actually a very niche product. People in that time, they are working on the general computing server. However, when I dip in into this industry, I find out all the, a lot of uh, company, they work in directly with university. A lot of new idea, technology, direct transfer from university to the company. All a, lo a lot of different applications that are just booming in this area. And this is my core belief. The GPU server, the AI, gonna to be the future. So I dedicate myself into this industry. I study the academic paper, technical document, whole day long. Even when people ask me, what are you, what did you do during the weekend? I barely, I embarrass tell them, actually I'm study the paper and technical document. But however, I find this exercise is quite important because when you become a domain expert, you actually know where you are in this industry. And then you know where, what is your goal. You know how do you contribute to this industry. So that's why I have the chance that I joined NVIDIA and then become a product manager. And I just, and after I joined that, I realized um, what, what I have done before is actually the daily routine as a PM in NVIDIA. So uh, if you are going to like, pivot to, to, as a product manager, as, a, as I think Robert mentioned, you're gonna have to know yourself, gonna have to know your target audience and how do you provide a value. And the second one is that you, tr you want to find an industry that you truly believe in and you are passionate. And the third one is that dedicate yourself how working in this industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really so cool. Yeah. So um, the question is about learning. Right? So yeah. I also want to say that, um, so I went to an event by uh, like a VP of uh, like Google or Meta on the product side. And then one thing I, I found it very helpful for me is that he said that you, for, your, for every role that you're choosing, every job, you optimize for your learning. You don't optimize for your level or title. Because uh, if you know what you want to do, and then you make sure you have the roadmap of learning, so it's PM again. So basically, even for learning, you need to have a roadmap. So you know what you want to get from each role, and then you gradually build up your skill. And then when the right opportunity comes, then you are ready for that role. So I think, uh, for the learning part, I just want to say that just make sure like you are learning in every job, and then if you are not learning, just make sure like you try to find other like learning opportunity. So I I can use myself as an example. So I was in cloud industry uh, for my first few job in US, like in, I was in the AWS and Azure, and at that time when I interact with some big enterprise customers, and I see a lot of them start to like exploring using AI in the company, using AI in the product. So I feel like that's a very interesting technology and it's, it will be a future trend. So that's why I make sure like in the company, I can always work on the project or product that I can work on like AI related stuff. And then, uh, so, and then also like my next job in the startup, I also decided to join a machine learning platform company because I just want to learn more about machine learning, learn more about AI overall. 
And then for my another like startup job, because I really want to learn about, about like what's Gen AI and how can I apply Gen AI into product. So I actually try to bring Gen AI into the product and then learn a lot about Gen AI. So always make sure like you know what you want to learn and then bring that learning into like your job, your product. I think that's something that you can build up and then eventually get to where you want to be. Yeah, hundred percent. Just um, I think Lily made a very great point about like building the a work back plan or a roadmap for yourself. Like I was just sharing my a little experience with myself. Like in I think in twenty fifteen when I was working in Japan as engineer implementing an IoT products. Then I realized, hey, that's something it's so powerful, I'm gonna get into that. But how do I get into that? And I just search uh, again, not LinkedIn, but I, I haven't known Lee back then. Uh, I and found out that a lot of like successful PM, they have um, either engineering background, they have a, a very good MBA. And that's when I set the goals that, hey, in seven or eight years, I want to be working on AI products or like ML products in a, a tier one company in Silicon Valley. And I was working in the countryside of Kyoto. And how did I do that? I just write down the goal very clearly. Hey, this thing I want to want to do every year, and that's a requirement, and I do it. Um, after MBA, I, I went to Amazon. I'm not doing the AI product. I'm doing the retail, very cutthroat, high demanding, stressful jobs. Uh, did it about a year, and then kind of like navigating myself into an AI uh, product, which is Alexa AI, building a search Q&A, which now turned to be a Gen AI power Amazon Rufus. So if you use the, the Amazon it's in the search widget, you can ask questions to give you the answer. And that experience really helped me to get into the meta AI infra. And then that's kind of the looking backwards. If I wouldn't had a, the requirements every year and then just execute it, that Probably, I, I just cannot think like how would I ended up like still when I was in Japan and working in the, in the manufacturing industry in semiconductor. So that, if you want to make a very good big change, just you know, write down the goal, long term plan, work back plan, and then go do it. Yeah, really resonated well with what you said. Yeah, it's very sharing, very sharing. Yeah, I think often that we will. Let's get a round of applause for, for our speaker. For the I think it's really soft provoking. I think uh, I, so, I often hear about the saying and analogy, saying that uh, chew yourself like a product. I feel it's like a little bit objectify a person. So I don't like that saying, but you can definitely treat your, your career or your career growth like a product growth. I think that's more right, that's the, the right thing. So when at product management work, we do the role mapping and then we do the prioritization. And we definitely thinking of, oh, what's, uh, what are we doing the first? So what's the most high prioritized item that I need to do? So we can bring out some framework like effort versus like value, those things into your career development. But I also want to call, call out for uh, the in the morning that Sue was saying that uh, tech may be not that important. And uh, I think it's also a good saying. I think in the product work, I can resonate that, that we often have time called like non-functional -fun, non feature. So I feel like not every single feature need to be contribute to a value of customer or something. We sometimes need to go back to like bug fixing. If you feel like you're burned out, you have mental issue, you have family, you have other priority in your life, just do it as a, as a bug fixing. So I think that's the, the pretty way that we can plan our career, like we plan a product, but don't treat yourself like a product. <laughs> so that's my takeaway. And according on the, the in, this pro, in this one, I wonder that in your domain, your experience or all of your experience, how do you balance out the different type of uh, product work, like uh, domain knowledge is important, you need to read a paper, or you feel like people skill is also important, or what do you rank the most, maybe undervalued, or you feel the most important skill or important things you, you think people might overlook when they are looking into product? Do you have anything? Yeah, you can add. Yeah, I, I think, um, <laughs> So, 
I have a uh, some chance to discuss with different companies uh, senior leadership and uh, uh, talking about product manager and there is a trait they always in on top of the, the list which is curiosity so um, when people have the curiosity you gonna to find out what you are passionate and you gonna to dip into the problem and once you dip into the single problem, you're gonna to uh, become the son of an expert in this area. And based on this, you have a depth, uh, you have a lot of like, you, you, you still have the, your uh, curiosity and you're gonna to expand your scope to become a uh, wide band, right? So I'm also lucky to, uh, to see some of this uh, senior leadership team and they always bring their uh, key person uh, when I, in, in my career, no matter my previous company, this company, the key person you always, there's also one of the key thread in, on their side. Curiosity is all, almost in everywhere. And the second one, based on it, they build a domain knowledge. So once you have a very deep domain knowledge, you know, then you can help the team to make accurate decision and also to solve the problem quickly and provide your value to your team or even your partner. So I think this is the first one. And the second one is, the, of course, uh, execution is always the most important one. We call it uh, get shut down. You want to make sure that you are the person get shut down. And then so that if everyone is just talking, talking, then we don't have anything become the outcome, right? And the third one, I believe that will be communication. Almost those leaders, I feel they are very good communicator. So yeah, this is my takeaway from those uh, key factors that become a successful product manager. Yeah. I appreciate our audience being here. You must be a little bit curious about <laughs> product management. So I appreciate you're here and we want to know you more. So later we'll open up for the Q&A that we want to communicate more and want to know you more. So is there anything you want to add before we uh, jump into a Q&A session? We want to set an, an ending note before uh, I think we left 10 minutes for the Q&A. So. Any skill for the previous question or anything you want to add before we get into a Q and A? Okay. One thing I want to say is I know there are people here that they want to be product manager, but they feel like they don't have the right product manager training. But I honestly I don't feel like there's one single training can make a good PM. So you always like just uh, come into PM from your original profession. So for example. I met with, like I have some colleagues that they were designer before. And then when they become the PM, so they become the product, the, the PM of the product that really care about user experience because that's their strengths. So they use that strengths to get into the product management and then they can gradually like, train other part of the skill set like an analytical skill and te technical skill. Yeah, so just don't worry about what exactly is a PM skill. So just be like open mind and then know like what is your strengths and then like understand customer's pain point and then just be, be curious, be like a curious and then open mind. I feel like everyone can be PM, yeah. Nice, nice. Anything or? Okay, how about here? So um, there is a saying from the, the book called the alchemist, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is a quote saying, um, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call, um, wherever your high is, there you find your treasure. So I think most of people here, you want to people to uh, PM or uh, no matter uh, you are in which industry, I think your heart will lead you to your treasure. Do you want anything? Um, it's fine, it's fine. I don't have anything, but I feel like Lee and Andy did a, a fantastic job. Uh, I don't have any smart things to add. I'd love to you know, hear that helpful thing again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to listen to our, our main customers, all of you, and I appreciate what we have 
Wow, more than why, what we expected. So many people standing, so I appreciate your coming. So yeah, let's open up for the question, and uh, I think uh, let's make it easy, just uh, raise your hand. When you have your question, raise your hand, and then I will pass the microphone. Yep. Thank you very much. All right, uh, here it is. Hello, I'm Adi, like the car. First of all, thank you for coming on a Saturday, like see all those people here. Like, people skip classes in college. They come here on Saturday and stand here, that's amazing, right? So thank yeah. you all so much. No um, my question is, oh, by the way, I'm a PM and also a small business owner. My question to you is, what's your roadmap? You're talking about working backwards from our roadmap, our goals, senior PM. What I want to know is what you think. What do you think the world's going to turn to 10 years? What's your roadmap for the next 10 years? Start a company, right, consulting business, real estate, right? Like people build a farm in like, I don't know, Texas when they retire, what's your roadmap for the next 10 years? So, uh, let me clarify, your roadmap mean our personal life and growth? Career, career. career. Personal life, you want to include that too, sure, but why not? But <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about real estate, so talking about how we manage our portfolio, <laughs> investment. No, 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 no. <laughs> What do you want to be in 10 years, right? Like, right? Maybe I want to become a senior product lead or whatever, whatever. What do you want to be in 10 years? That's what I want to know. Yeah, do any, any speaker or you you want to ask? You are great. I want to learn all about you. Oh, yeah. You are different, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyone want to take this or <laughs> anything? I want to win lottery. <laughs> <laughs> and then retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can. Yeah. Okay, then I take. Yeah, yeah. I, I think to answer your question, I, I don't. Um, I think. The, the one product, like, like I said, if you put a roadmap on your, yourself, it's you find a, a good balance of your career growth and uh, your personal life. I would definitely, in our seniority or age group, I would definitely put a life part in at least maybe 40, uh, 50 percent of my overall planning. But uh, for the career development, um, I want to have some experience of managing a big scale of product and uh, I want to treat my subsidiary. Now I only manage contractor. I want to talk to someone who are aspire to be a PM or just a junior PM in my team and understand how we can navigate this together and how can we can form a good team because I think um, that is one of the experience I have those personal bonding with someone in the industry and uh, we can together build a great thing that can, we can pr be proud of when we are getting old. I think that's one of my five, ten years ago. Yeah. Yes. Anything? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, so I actually like MBA. And MBA when player they, they are in like they perform they always say I just want to want to enjoy the game, hmm. right? So. Uh, Maybe different people have different so, but for me, I don't have the roadmap. But I want to play the game, not a score. When I play the game, the score will take care of it by themselves. I want to make sure that in my uh, domain expert, I know what is the vision, and I truly believe in. And then based on that, to develop, no matter which direction I gonna to go. Yeah. So. Anyway, this is my, my tag, but maybe a different person have different point of view, yeah? yeah. Hey, now you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to win lottery. No, so I'm always interested in like uh, become a, like a entrepreneurial. So I feel like starting my own company or like maybe co-founding a company with other people would be something I would like to pursue because eventually I feel like a success, successful founder is actually a real successful PM. So I want to test myself and then see if I can be a real, like a big success PM. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a next question. Robert, let me know if you want to chime in, all right? <laughs> Hello. Hi, um, I'm Spencer. Um, I, so often we heard it's not about the output, it's about the outcome. Like we heard that a lot. So my question to you guys is, um, what kind of metrics, like measurable metrics, you could use to evaluate against yourself, like um, annual basis on your performance, or 
What kind of metrics do you use to see if you're growing? Are the metrics of evaluating your own self-career growth or the metrics yeah. of your, your team or? Like you, the value that you contribute to the company. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I was gonna answer in the, the, the money in my bank account. <laughs> 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 so is that the, how, can I, how can we know how, how much we contribute to a product? Wow, I think that's interesting. Um, I can say before each each phase in uh, each planning phase, we already had a K OKR or KPI. And those are very objective, and uh, you can measure it easily. But definitely, there are a lot of quantitative a qualitative one that is not easy to measure. Uh, so uh, I would say in the product anyway, there's a lot of good product sense or there's like execution framework that they can easily apply. I don't know if that's into your question or anything that yeah. Yeah, you want to I add. I can probably add one thing. A, a very simple test to my own self is what would happen if you're not there? Um, I mean, there's many good problems for you to take, right? And then what would happen if you, do it, if you didn't do it? I mean, otherwise the other come to it. And then back to the metric questions. Um, it's really dependent on the stage or the maturity of the products. For example, if you work on ads, everything is about money. Like the revenue impact you lift, or the sales faster, the cycle. If you work on a growth product, like threads, um, it's all about the, the growth and usage. If you work on, I don't know, Salesforce CRM products, um, but always tie back to what is the long term and the the most important thing for your customers. For example, you might care about the usage, like the time they spend on your products, but if your product's low, they may you know, take more time for them, so that might be a, a bad metric. So it really comes back to like, what is the most important thing for the customer, and also what will happen if you're not there. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, okay, we have one minute left, so let's say for the last question. Yeah. Okay, Kyle. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi, I'm Kyle. Uh, my question is like, how does generative AI change the, like, how does it generative AI change the way you work or how does it boost your productivity or make you more creative? Yeah, the, the quick answer is it's involved in any of uh, our work because like of writing a PRD and doing a role mapping work and also can put everything to, you know, React system and verify it for us. I think it's in that like office space there's definitely a lot of to help, but uh, in high level, I didn't see too much, too much uh, impact to the essence of product because I think it's very, very subjective. So that's why product sense is so important that you can definitely not outsource product sense to to large language model or anything. Anything to add? I use JAI to automate a lot of uh, like more, I would say, time-consuming but trivial tasks. So for example. If you guys know like Jira, so I use that to create Jira tickets. So basically, I just write the template and then let Jenny fill out all the details for me to create like a 20 tickets. So it saves me a lot of time because previously it takes like a like maybe half day for me to create all those tickets. Yeah. So I basically just use that to automate. Yeah. So before we close it up, thank you, Lily. Before we close it up, I do want to uh, appreciate your Lily, just like Andy just sharing about that uh, you all have a great curiosity about your career and the product management career and you're passionate about learning that you come here and it's Saturday afternoon and I want to get the round of applause for yourself, all right? Um, and lastly, I do want to call out for our fantastic team. They are hero or heroine behind the scene. Uh, Constance, Hilda, and Scully, and uh, our a lot of our organizer that I can you name it. They are a fantastic, and they really help us doing. Without them, we cannot sit here sharing our perspective with you. Let's get a round of applause for them, all right? Yeah, really appreciate Scully and Constance did a great job. Yeah, without them, the event wouldn't be possible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. You guys really flatter us. We didn't pay you, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you yeah. for everybody. So, uh, okay, last but not least, Lily, I, I did save this slide for you. So, maybe you want to promote the events? Yeah, so, 
uh, for women. <laughs> so basically, we are starting a new community focusing on like Taiwanese women in computing, or you can say like Taiwanese women in tech. And then basically, is the community affiliated with uh, like a Grasshopper event? So this year, we are going to have a Taiwanese community night at the Grasshopper event. So if uh, any of you are going to Grasshopper, feel free to like stop by the community night. And then also uh, here, so we have some survey that we want to kind of uh, learn more about what you guys are interested in, uh, what type of the event that you will be interested in for this type of community. And then uh, so potentially like we might have guest speakers or workshop or like uh, different panels just to help foster like a Taiwanese woman in the tech to learn, learn from each other. So if you are interested, like scan the QR code and then fill out the survey for us and then we will let you know like what other event we have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so it's about a, a product development section. Thank you all. No and uh, right now we will have six minute break and then next section we will start from yeah. uh, 2.30. Be before that, Constance, yeah. let's promote our event. <laughs> we also, I'm working at, at a, a non-profit where we have <laughs> events <laughs> in November in the Calvary History Museum, November 9th. Yeah, yeah please do a, so. Not, yeah, uh, so yeah. we will have an event in November. Yeah. Uh, so if you are interested, learn more about tech, then uh, welcome to yeah. join us. We, we have a booth there. We'll come to stop by, all right? <laughs>